Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Log on to RoyalCentralPraiseLive.com or YouTube, Facebook at Central Praise SKB for making a difference to prayer, conversation, and spoken word with your host, Pastor Clyde Williams. You can join us by making the call 1869 664 64 Nine one and make a difference. Your life is upside down. Good day, everyone. Welcome to Making a Difference. Wherever you are located, we are glad that you have spent time to in tune and be a part of this program today. Wherever you are, whatever continent, whatever region, in whatever time zone. Thank you for joining and to be a part of making a difference. I'm your host, Pastor Clyde William. And the pleasure is mine, as usual, to come where you are and to present uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. As you know, we're here and um, when we gather, we deal with uh, spoken word, we deal with prayer, and we deal with conversations. And today, we are having a conversation we are having a conversation with a brother and um i like his enthusiasm I like his energy and uh we'll be exploring the topic uh the man his role as provider his role as a partner and his role as priest within the home my god i'm excited i want to hear what he has to say so thank you for being a part of us and thank you for tuning in uh before we continue let us pause and let us pray father we thank you that we can come again to present the gospel to tell others about what you're doing in and through us because truly father the gifts that you've given us is for the body of christ and for humanity so, Father, as we use our gifts, Father, to impact humanity and the body of Christ, at the end, all the glory and honor will be given over to you. So we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity one more time. And we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we bless the Lord. We thank the Lord for being here. And um, we are going to take a break. And when we come back, I'm going to introduce our our guest, and uh, we are going to take it from there. All right? We are going to take a break. We'll be right back. Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Log on to RoyalCentralPraiseLive.com or YouTube, Facebook at Central Praise SKB for making a difference to prayer, conversation, and spoken word with your host, Pastor Clyde Williams. You can join us by making the call 1-869-664-6491 and make a difference. Your life is upside down. Welcome back to Making a Difference. I'm your host, Pastor Clyde Williams, and I have with me in the studio, Brother Raymond Puzzle. Brother Raymond. Good to have you with us in the studio. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, wherever you are, welcome to Making a Difference. This is our guest, Brother Raymond Percival. Brother Raymond, how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful, and you? I'm fine too. Uh, uh, apart from you being a, 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 a strong man of God with good work ethics and Christian ethics, uh, um, tell our audience, uh, give us one minute about about you in terms of your work experience and in terms of uh, who you are as an individual, walking on the street every day. <laughs> um, my name is Raymond Percival. Um, a lot of people might know me as Dalish, you know, that came from a football name. Um, in terms of, you know, person walking the streets, um, I will say I'm a humble person who always strive for peace always try to keep out of the um the confusion and the sort of things you know that could easily distract you from your your mission and your focus you know i'm not one who talks a lot uh like a lot of crowds and things like that you know 
So, I'm a cool going guy. Easy to get along with. Well, easy <laughs> to speak to. You know, don't... I don't easily be flustered and upset and angry and those sort of things. So, that, that's me. Well, 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 I hope with these qualities you can pass it on to those who work with you and those who hang out with you. He's also a a good golfer. Um, he has missed opportunities to to be right now on the world stage. Uh, we would have had a, a professional golfer, but um, those doors, when he wanted, when they were open, some of them um, closed before he stepped into them. Others are yet to open. He's still good. His shoulders are still fantastic. So um, he still travels and does golfs in the region and, and outside of the region. And um, so we know his golfing skills. What we are here to look at are his... Um, his biblical skills, his family skills, his 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 role as a man in terms of um, what he gives out in terms of his spiritual intelligence. And um, he's here to discuss our topic. So we're going to look first as the man, as provider, because he talks about himself being on the street. I mean, how does he... How, how does a man, uh, how do you as a man, uh, what do you want to say to us um, in terms of you, a man being a provider, a man being there to ensure a family's stability, generation after generation, being that provider? Well, first, let me say, if you're going to provide for your family, you must have a job. Right. And... You have to, as a man, know what influence the spiritual climate in your house, like you as the man. You're responsible for bringing your family together in prayer. You're responsible for bringing your family together in Bible reading and those sort of things. Even the most antagonistic child in your house will be influenced by you as the role model in the house, as a leader, as a provider, and as someone who is led by God. Right. Providing for your family, like I say, you must have a job. You must not see the needs for your family. If you don't provide your family, the Bible says you're worse than an infidel. You're not in the faith. You're not believing in the faith right. if you do not provide for your family. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to provide for your family effectively, you have to keep away from the drinking, the liming, the casinos, the smoking, the, um, the excess spending on things that you don't actually need. So you provide for your family effectively. What if, what if, what if the, the, the casino provides the money? So well, what what is your position and gambling? What is your position of and lottery and gambling and these things that bring in money that that uh, traditionally others would give a red flag? I I for one I don't believe in in the um, casino gam. I don't believe in gambling. Period. And as a child of God, you know I don't believe in that. You know if if you if you're not safe, you expect to do things like that. Right. But the main fact is, if you're not providing for your family, that is where the trouble comes in. Right. Because then you're going to leave your family to do what? If you're not providing for them, what are your wife going to do? What are your children going to do if you're mm -hmm. not providing? Right. So the main focus here is make sure that you're providing for your family and not just spiritual things. You provide for your family material things. They need clothes. They need shoes. You gotta make sure they have a, a roof over the head and, and and stuff like that. Right. So so in provision then it's not only physical, it's not only things for the body, but they need spiritual provision. Um they need um shelter over their head. That's right. So the role, one of the role of the man is to ensure that wholesomely that family or your family is being provided for in all these areas. Now I suppose that that if these are not um, taken care of by the man, it means then that uh, the, the family will be 
sort of a stretch to go and look elsewhere. If you as the father not providing, let's say, finances, mm -hmm. and um, one of the children decides to go and play the lottery, mm -hmm. win the lottery, what would you do with the money? Uh, what would you say? I mean, the, the money's already in. I mean, what, what would be your take on it? Given, given that you, you, you as a believer mm -hmm. do not uphold such working, such work ethic, but then there are those who will say, well, that's you, but I am going to do it. But they're under your roof. Well, obviously, if they're 18, right. that is when they'll be able to buy lottery tickets. Right. I don't think they sell lottery tickets under, to somebody right, under 18. Right, right. If they go and they get lottery tickets for themselves and they say they win the lotto, mm -hmm. Well, that's them. Right. But my role, my role as 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 the the prophet, the priest, and the king, the leader in the house, yeah. is to guide the children in the right direction. Right. Now, if they reach to age and they 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 tour from your teaching, yes, their blood is that on your shoulder. Okay. Okay. Fair so enough. So you're clear from that. Fair enough. Right. So then you you have to make sure that the principles in the Christian home is being upheld that the principles, sorry, are being upheld mm -hmm. and that the, the biblical values and so forth that support um, your, your Christian faith are being carried out. Yes. After the age of 18, then, then, you, then you become flexible or you just let them go? You don't, you don't let them go, per se, in relation to the godly principles. Uh -huh. But you're not going to hold them back from exploring if they want to go out, you can't lock them up because they're not, they're, 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 they reach adult stage. Yeah. So you're not going to lock them down in the house. You're not going to hit them. You're just going to continue telling them about God and trying to show them the principles and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Make sure that is your focus. You continue telling them uh, about about the, um, the spiritual life. Right. Now, now, even though we are looking at the... Um, as a priest and a provider and so forth, all these are interlocking. So we are going to have to use them inter, um, within one another, not just to sectionize them to say, okay, well, this is this section. Because they're all interlocking in terms of you being a man in the home. Now, the the child, the children, the, the wife, um, all those who are under your roof, mm -hmm. should someone come to your house as the male um, we, we just finished a uh, festival, the um, cultural armor. Should they travel and come, and they come under your roof, but they come to go to cultural armor, come to go to some festival that does not align with your principles, what would be your position? You, 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 um, if, some, they, if a family member right, come. from overseas they come want, to visit want to come to visit, right. But the main focus is to come oh, to go to a festival. To go to a festival that does not align with that does not align with maybe yeah your God your God's principles, principles. Right, right right as the man of the house as the man of the house I I don't think as a family member you know I don't think I put them on the road yeah no you let them stay you let them stay yeah but they they have to be some sort of respect you let them know what your house stand for. So when they go out and they come in, mm -hmm. they know they come into a godly house. They know they're coming back to a house where don't accept certain behavior, mm -hmm. <coughs> sorry, and certain style of dressing and certain style of um <coughs> the songs that they, they they might hear or right. the behavior. Right. So once they, they know answer, these things, uh -huh. I, I I am good with that. So you're saying that okay, someone can travel and come, but as the man of the house, when they reach the threshold of the house. The principles are set down and they have to be governed and carry them out yes should that be broken you, you you're not going to put them out but but there's a question remain whether or not they will come back or... yeah i uh, i probably might reach to that stage where you know uh -huh. i will have to think twice if i will invite them back okay all right okay well then okay i'm, I'm going to give you about two or three minutes to to just speak generally and the man as a provider just generally, and then we are going to go into the man in terms of his priesthood. 
Well, as a man, like I said before, to provide you must have a job. Mm -hmm. I for I for one who I don't hold back from my wife in relation to the bills or food stuff like and things like that. You know, you can't be a provider for your house and don't see certain things needed <clears throat> and don't provide it. You have to make sure that there is food in the house for your family. You have to put your money aside for the house. If you're somebody who want to go maybe on the street, take a lime or whatever, mm -hmm. your household must be take it, taken care of first. Okay, given. given. Must. Yes, that's a you given. You can't go on the road, spend half your money, uh -huh. come home, tell your children, tell your wife, the money is there. She has the right to ask you, where is the money gone? Because <laughs> you are the provider. Right. And that is where I think some men have lost their respect yeah. in relation to their families. Because no sensible woman is going to be sit at home, fat children at home, you go work, spend half your money, come home, no food at home, and then she just take it easy. Take it easy. No, she's not going to do that. Okay. And that is why sometimes women will take the responsibility of looking after the family. And then you now look like a little boy, Mm -hmm. can't provide for your family because the woman now then people gonna say oh the woman is ruling you but somebody have to take the, the leading role sometimes we as men mm -hmm. allow the women to be for say the leader of the house because we do not stick to our 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 responsibilities as as the man in the house we always use the phrase that um women are the weaker vessel because we look at it wrong the women are the weaker vessel because of what she was made from. She was made from a rib. And that is why the Bible tells us we must handle them carefully. Very carefully, yes. The because way you speak to her, the way you treat her. That is what the Bible is speaking about. The Bible is not speaking about a physical strength that man, the women is more weak of spiritually. Because she makes from a rib, you handle her with more care. You speak to her in a different turn and stuff like that. But if you're cheating your, your wife, like Ma manhandling, manhandling on, yeah. abusing her verbally right, and so right, on, right, right, right. you know, the, the time going to come when she's just going to say, you know what, uh -huh. I can't take on this and she's going to do as she like yeah. and there's a whole breakdown in the house. Right. <laughs> that, and that will not be good. Exactly. That will not be good. When, when, when the disrespect begins, that will not be good because the, then a lot of things begin to be eroded and yes. everything going to be... The whole family in a disarray. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not good. You know, while you were talking about that and the role and support of the woman taking it up because the man become absent, um, it brings to mind that within our homes, a lot of homes, you see that the woman has taken up the responsibility to like run the home in terms of um, putting forth the guidelines, putting on the rules, mm -hmm. ensure the principles are carried out because the man is is it so much that the man is absent physically or the man is absent from doing his responsibility well that could that's a very good question because that could go both ways yeah it's like being home uh -huh. don't necessarily mean that you're spending time ah uh -huh. because you could be home and your wife 24 7 and it don't mean that you you're all home. have a good relationship it don't mean you're home your body's home yeah but your mind is elsewhere right for instance if you're not if you're home mm -hmm. but you're not providing mm -hmm. you're not providing anything um substantial substantial are you not helping are you not helping with the children are cooking or anything nothing you're absent right. you're, you're, abs you're home mm -hmm. but you're absent right you're home you know but you're absent because you're not doing anything and then you could be whole, you could be absent physically because you're never home. Right, right. That you're never that home. Too. And so that you leave the burden on the and and the, and the wife. Right. And then the children know the boys gotta tell you something. There is no better way for a boy to to be raised. Yeah. A model. A, a model. A, 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 a pattern. 
Uh, right. Yes, then, then a, a father is home. Right, right. When a father is home, it's a difference. A different I go back to this movie, Lion King. Mm -hmm. When Simba misbehave, the rule of the father yeah, brings sip right. Yeah, it will vibrate. No, it? uh. it's the same thing in the house, you know. When a mother speak, yeah. it's a different tone than when the father, when the father speak. Yeah. I have experienced that for myself. When yeah. I speak, yeah. It's a different than if the my wife, wife speak to the yeah. to, to our children. son. Yes, yes. So a father is very important in the house, not in the house, but still out the house. <laughs> because you could be in the house, but not there. But not there. Because right. you're not trying to raise the children, mm -hmm. you're not trying to help in nothing. But right. if you're in the house, mm -hmm. physically and spiritually. Uh -huh. So this is where the partnership comes in. Because Ex right. you find that both now have to work together towards a common good. Right. So then if he's not doing his part and she alone is doing her part, then a part is missing. Exactly. Right. And then the problem lies again is when is when the mother and one the worst thing one the worst thing to do uh -huh. is when a, a one side of the parents trying to discipline a child. Right. And then in front of okay, if I'm doing discipline, right. then the wife will say to me Leave him alone or leave her alone. That yeah. is wrong. That is wrong. If you don't like the measure of my chastisement or the measure of my discipline, right. we go to a separate room yeah. and you say to me, you know, it could have been done a different right. way. I but never, never, in front the child. never in front of the child. I remember that. I remember when I had my children small. Mm -hmm. They went to the mother. I like children, I would like to go to the mother first. Eh? Right. Because I think they, they, she's more mm -hmm. lenient. <laughs> and they, she asked her if she could go, they could go to the beach. I heard the conversation and she tell them no. Then they come to me. And I asked them, what did your mother say? They said no. I said, well, no. no. Right. And that is the way to bring up children. You never tell a child, oh, leave them alone, let her go. No. If the mother said no, it's no. If the father said no, it's no. What, 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 about, what about outside? Let's say you're outside of the context of the home. Mm -hmm and somebody else is talking to your child, disciplining your child, what is it? What would you say? Well, I, I will say I, I came up in the old school yeah. where a community raised a child. Right. And if someone is disciplining my children yeah. in a manner where... It falls in line with... It falls in line. And support yes, I, I have no problem with it. I, I, somebody gave me uh, a, a, a real-time experience that they mm -hmm. had where where they were in a particular setting, okay, here on the island. Mm -hmm. And the child was behaving out of context and according to the setting, out of context, mm. okay? I would have been in the setting, but I wasn't where they were at the time. And the person said to me, I am not going to say anything else to any other child because in speaking to the child, the parent now come and begin to give harsh words towards the person disciplining the child mm -hmm. and telling the person leave the child alone and when i saw what i saw from the distance i was the child was totally totally out of order for as a child mm -hmm. number one and then in the context where we were told so there were two things working against the child but the parent the parent and it was a woman decided best to holler at the individual and say, listen, leave my child alone. Don't tell my child anything. So then what encouragement do you have outside seeing children outside of their home context to speak with them? Another thing that I observed too is when we go to supermarkets, mm -hmm. you see all these children running around, running around like this is a ball field. Yes. And the parents are saying nothing. You, you, it's like you cannot say anything to them because the parents are going to make nice. What say you? You know, <laughs> what I will say, we have, it's a real breakdown in yes. society uh -huh. in relation to raising children. And I am glad that I was born here, that I was born. Because like I said, I came up in the old school yeah. where I could not go down the road and don't say good morning to Miss James. Uh -huh. And my mother and my father know about it. Even... Miss James and my mother don't speak. There was this discipline in the communities where even two parents, different parents don't speak 
children could not pass without saying good morning or good afternoon. And why I say it's a breakdown right now in society, it's okay for a child to behave a certain way if they're not your child. And then you cannot correct them. And you cannot correct them. Otherwise, you're getting a tongue lashing from the parent. And one of that problem is because too much children is having children. So again, the lack of... The lack of training. Yeah. The lack of discipline is what is missing from these communities. One of the things that upsets me a lot. For instance, I am saying I am from the old school. And some of the teaching or the training that I got right. back then. Right? Uh -huh. Now I have children. I do not want to apply the same training and discipline. That is wrong. If I know I couldn't behave a certain way to my mother and my father back then, I should not allow, allow my children to come now and behave this way towards me. Moses. God told Moses to pass on the teaching right unto the generation and let right. them teach each other and right. generation to generation that is not happening because god was setting up a nation that will reflect principles right. that carry over the value from one person to, to the, the next. next so yes. it becomes a continuity right and you realize whenever these things were broken down you realize they fell in the hands of 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 the enemy and that is what happened and when they no. cry unto god and they mm -hmm. came back to the old school mm -hmm. and this is where the scripture when God responded to Solomon after he 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 dedicated the temple, he said, "If my people, yeah. who are called by my, my, my name, name yes. will humble themselves yes. and seek me and turn." So yes. right now there needs to be a turning, turn in, 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 in turning from the ways yes. and the lifestyle. Yes. So I, I a pastor said on Sunday while he was praying, he said, "The problem is a sin problem." Mm -hmm. They have turned their back against God. Yes. They have turned their back against his principles. Yes. They have turned their back against what God wants. Yes. And just like Israel, if they would turn themselves back mm -hmm. and repent and give themselves over to God, then he will hear from heaven yes. and solutions are going to come. You know, you know, sometimes in conversation, yeah. I always tell people, I am not surprised mm -hmm. there were things mm -hmm. is the way things happening right now in, in our nation or the world and at large. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised. Right. Because men have turned away from God's principles. What God is against, man now is trying to make it right. Hmm. And I'm not surprised. Because God is not going to change his mind and his principles because we do not believe. Right. right. He's not going to change. Yeah. And... For instance, if God says it's wrong for a woman to be with a woman, yeah. what makes it right for me now to come and to tell come and to say in God's face. In God's face. And tell him. I saw it the other day, must be on Facebook and nothing upset me more than I tell my wife that is not a marriage. Whatever she said, what it is. I said, whatever it is, I don't know, but it's not a marriage. Marriage is between a man yes. and a woman. Yes. Yes. And this pastor, a lady. Is, is putting um, two women together. And I said, Dan, this is why the world is like this. Because man have torn away from God's principles. And the same thing, parents, we have, I, I, I sad to say, men, most men, if you go down on the, the, the bus stop here, like on Fridays, yes. you see how much man down there on the bar stools and sitting around doing nothing. And, and maybe, you're wondering, where are the wives, where are the mothers, we are the even the girlfriends. We are the children. Exactly. We are the grandchildren. And the man who is to take this principal role is elsewhere. Now, what time is he going to come home? Exactly. When he reaches home, everybody's sleeping. What is he going to do? Exactly. Which brings me to priesthood. Yes. Um, we are going to look at. We, we are going to take a break. But when we come back, we want to look at priesthood because God did say to Solomon, "If my people." who are called by my name, will humble themselves and seek my face. So we are going to look at the priesthood aspect of the man and seeking the face of God in terms of being, being the head of the home, running the home, leading the home. We are going to look at that. So um, this is making a difference. Wanted to stay tuned. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. All right. Thank you.
Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Log on to RyanCentralPraiseLive.com or YouTube, Facebook at Central Praise SKB for making a difference to prayer, conversation, and spoken word with your host, Pastor Clyde Williams. You can join us by making the call 1 669 664 64 91 and make a difference. Your life is upside down. All right. Thank you very much. Welcome back to Making a Difference. I'm your host, Pastor Clyde Williams, and we are looking at the role of the man as a partner, the role of the man as a priest, the role of the man as a provider. And our guest today is uh, the man of God, Brother Raymond Percival, and um, he's, an astute, he's an astute golfer. We, we'll talk about that some other time. But today we are looking at the role of the man. So we are back, and um, we are covering the aspect of a man as a priest because... God told Solomon, he said, if my people who are called by my name, he talk about humbling themselves, but he talk about seeking the face of God. So we're going to look at the man of God as priest, as the one who seeks the face of God. Um, and what does that transcend into the family? Go ahead, Brother Raymond. Well, I want to read something here. Yes. Um, the role of a priest. Mm -hmm says while a prophet represent while a prophet represent god mm -hmm. to the people a priest represent the people to god in the old testament the priest would turn his back to them and meditate on their behalf before god so that brings me to that is what as a priest in a house should be doing for his family sometimes he have to bring his family without their presence sometimes to God pray for his family and meditate on the word mm -hmm. and so he could effectively teach his family right now our focus Jesus is our high priest who meditates between us mm -hmm. and the father mm -hmm. and as Christians we no longer need a human medi medi meditor mediator mediator sorry to go to God mm -hmm. Hebrews 4 14 16 mm -hmm. but we can still use this as a model of spiritually leading our families to fervent fervent prayer we get the scared opportunity the scarce opportunity to go to god on the behalf of our loved ones not only on the behalf of our wives and children but our friends our extended family and members as well so as priests we all we have to incorporate our whole family wives the children in our house entire and house and bloodline and bloodline yes in prayer to uh -huh. god uh -huh. spend time in prayer each day remembering the needs and the concerns of your wife pray for the salvation and faith of your children you may be the only person in the whole praying, in the world praying for them. And that is true. Sometimes you might be the only person in the world praying for your family. <laughs> On a regular basis. In order to really pray for them in a meaningful way, you need to be listening intently to them. You have to listen to your family. If you find it difficult to stay actively engaged and connected on a daily basis, we want to challenge you to become a student of your family so that you know their needs and concerns. Right. So, so as a if, priest. If, 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 if then we, the men, if we take up our priesthood position and cover our family and our bloodline and them in the household, it means then that what will transcend down, we will begin to have better in terms of people who are better able to relate where spiritual things are concerned. That initial step of the man. Talk, talk to us. Tell me then what the man have to do. Now, I, I've always heard, I, I want to make mention of two pastors. One 
Pastor Brown. I grew up under Pastor Brown. And when he came to prayer meeting, he was always praying. I wonder, why is it this man always praying, 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 praying? Can't he just stop? I mean, let me go home early. But he kept praying until the very end. He started off the prayer. And even when everybody finished, he's still praying. Then now I'm, I'm sitting on the Apostle Henville. He starts praying. And even when everybody finished praying, he's still praying. So it means then that you as the man has a significant role to play when it comes to prayer. Because I've seen the lives of those who grew up under Pastor Brown and those who grew up under Pastor Henville. Their lives are shaped, are sharpened, uh, should I say, uh, uh, they, they, the way of life are totally different. So it shows that there's a positive effect of prayer if we do it in the house. Yes. Right? Now, I want you to talk about these devotions because when we got up, when we grew up, they used to always have, my grandmother used to have a Bible next to her head. There's always used to be some sort of prayer. Tell us about that now because I've heard Apostle Henville say when he rings the bell for prayer in the morning, whether it's 4 or 5 o'clock, whether if they came in at 1 o'clock in the morning, they had to get up at 4. So <laughs> tell me about this. this you know, um, hour. Yes. devotion is very important. Mm -hmm. You know, I for one will not tolerate as a as a as a as a child of God, anyone, and be it adult or children. If I'm having devotion, everybody have to be in devotion. Which brings me, remember I asked you earlier, if you had somebody from your come in and they yes. want to go to a festival yes. that doesn't align. Now I come back to the question. Yes. Would would they come to the devotion? Yes. Okay. All right. After yes. Right. Well, men slept. Yes. The devil said, the, the friends, the devil shed tears. And so I, I would not allow. Yes. That is why I say there are certain principles and rules to the house. Right, right, right. Because if you come in mm -hmm. and it come back to what you, you just asked, if I'm inviting you, I'm going back. If I'm inviting you to the house. Yeah. From the time you party to the show. You I'm know in. that this house yes. is a house of prayer. Yeah. There are Christian people living here. Yes. This is what we believe in. Yes. Every 5 o'clock, 4.30, whatever, yes. we do devotions. Right. And you are invited. You are invited or you have to come? I'm sorry, you have to come. Oh. Because. Oh. Because after you, your roof. Under my roof, yes. no one sleep <laughs> when, they sleep when I'm having devotion. From Everybody have to be up. Right, right. I, Everybody have to be up. I, I, I want that to be stressed because I think right now, within the context of global community. Families need to come together to pray. Yes. Whether in yes. the morning or whether in the evening. Yes. Um, if you miss it once or twice, uh, maybe that's a gray area. Can be, can be but a regular thing. But you can't thing. be a regular thing. There you know, must be time spent praying together. You yes. know, I heard, the, you know, if I was a young man for say like, okay, if I was like, 15, 14 coming up and seeing the apostle life. Yeah. You know, that's a life I will try to emulate. Eh? Yeah. I always say that. I, I, I always say, I was like that age growing yeah. up and seeing the apostle. That is somebody I will try to be like. That's why I told about Pastor Brown. Yes. Because I will, he used to always pray and try say, to be why like. Why is it this man praying? But then I found that uh in my late teens and early 20s i began to pray long term and then okay well i didn't take it you know the mm -hmm. way i didn't see the effects i'm seeing i'm seeing the positive effect now mm -hmm. you know but when he was encouraging you to pray and pray and pray right you know i didn't see the value then but i'm seeing it now because these guys yeah. know these guys know what prayer have done for them you know yeah and yeah. there's something that they're trying to to instill in in, in in us. Yeah, yeah. You know, I never ever say myself because I, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. But my mother used to go to church and whatever prayer she probably used to set up for her children. Yeah. I don't know. Um being being to a member of Faith Tabernacle, we always used to have, you know, we, we have prayer meetings. Yeah. And they always somebody who's always come to me and try to encourage me to pray. And I have seen the positive side 
of prayer. Even something I go to work, I don't have to be on a show. I pray for my, my workplace. I pray for co-workers. I pray for neighbors and them sort of things. I always believe, for instance, look like Pastor Tammy mentioned a couple of Sundays, I think she mentioned it Sunday, that the prayer that you you you, you send up always go and wait for you. I, I yeah, believe I believe in that. The prayer prayer is something you can send to the future yes. and wait for you. I, oh, yes. I, I believe I believe I've that. Heard other people mention I believe it. that. Yes, yes. Because I believe sometimes I believe yes. I believe I am here today. Yeah. Because somebody because prayer that pray, was sent over for your me. head. Yes. Since you were small. And yeah. they await you. It, it's like yeah. it's like they wait for when you reach. So when you reach at age sixteen yeah. and whatever is to manifest, let's say there was evil to manifest, that prayer will break that when you reach there because because it has been sent ahead of you. And that that's one of the power of priesthood now yes. I, I, I want to ask you something else about priesthood now i want to ask you priesthood in terms of building an altar mm -hmm. um you i think you are the one of the first i heard really bring out this thing about having an altar in your house not just devotions but having a prayer altar mm -hmm. in the house so tell us about priesthood a priest and his altar in the house well for there is a specific place in your house where where you go to pray. You know, you know a lot of a lot of men of God. You hear them say they go to the bathroom or elsewhere in the house. Mm -hmm. I find I find as a prayer as an altar in your house that spot that you have set up as your altar mm -hmm. for prayer. I find when 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 we gather around that as a family, yeah. it's a difference than if you sit down on the veranda yeah. to pray. Ah, it's a difference because obviously, if you're sitting up an altar, yeah. you'll ask God to anoint that spot, yeah. anoint the area. Mm -hmm. So when you come to prayer, there'll be a difference. Right. For instance, let's one day, Mendon was home. And sometimes we we'll be missing from. Um, for meetings, yeah, we do it at home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll sit down. Yeah, yeah. That is expected. Let's stay home yeah. tonight and yeah. do our prayer at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you find that we stay maybe on the land the veranda to pray, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's different. Yeah. Than if we go to our spot. Ah. So it's a different feeling. Right, 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 right. I don't, I don't think, I don't think, anywhere you pray in your house, you get the same feeling. If you if you ask God, say, God, this is the altar, this is the spot that I have my family mm -hmm. to pray, and I want to anoint this spot, that when they come, that change will take yeah. place or whatever. Right. That spot is anointed by God, whether you could see yes or not. Right. Answer the prayer. And when you bring your family to that spot, yeah. it's a different. So so, so we are talking about two things here. Um, one, having devotions, because mm. sometimes the devotion doesn't have, is not by the altar. Because the altar could be by your bedside, the devotion right. could be out in the right. uh, on the chairs. Right. So, so, so there's a need for a family altar. Mm -hmm. That means where you come together, you have your devotion and so mm -hmm. forth. But then, as the man of the house, you also need an altar, a place where you commune with God. Yes. And if if uh, at any time you bring the family at that spot. Mm -hmm. The prayer would be different. Yes. Yeah. So there's a need then for an altar in the house. Every this is what Brother Raymond is saying, and and I'm in agreement. Every man of God, every child of God, every male leading his house, even if you don't have a family, but you live alone, uh, uh, you are a man. You need to have an altar. You need a place set aside in your house where you meet God on a daily basis. Because that place is anointed and set apart where God will meet you, where like Jacob, where there's an open right. heaven, you know, where there's a ladder, you know, where you where there's a portal where, where God can um meet you and give you downloads. Right. Now, if the family gathers at that place, wow, what a it's moment. It's a difference. Right. It's a different different atmosphere. Right. So it it it, it is important for priesthood to be maintained within the family circle. 
because priesthood is important. Right. And Tell, yes. And the next thing I want to say about um, devotions. Mm -hmm. Everybody in devotion yeah. must take part. Right. Everybody in devotion must have something to say. Save or unsafe. And you know, by doing that, you, you're teaching them. The persons are growing exactly. up into, into a system, exactly. into a structure. You know, exactly. And who knows? Because remember, what a child learns, I mean, it's not easily the part Just when right. go. So then you, you, you grow up in a... You know, when my grandmother used to do that, I used to go to sleep. You mm -hmm. know, and she used to hit me. Clyde, wake up. Wake Clyde, up. But I used to sleep. Because mm -hmm. my grandmother prayed, I want to pray for two minutes and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. My grandmother prayed for <laughs> half an hour, five, five minutes. I'm ready uh -huh. to sleep. Yeah. Now look at the reverse. Joe. <laughs> Who would have thought exactly. that you would have wanted to pray for 45 minutes right. an hour? Right. But then the male, the man in the house, those trainings are important. Yeah. Uh, we have some minutes remaining. We are going to take a break. And when we come back within our community, and I'm sure in your neck of the woods, whatever continent, whatever region, whatever time zone you're in, uh, all is not well within your neighborhood. And so we, we want to look at how you as a man and how a male can uh, cut down or uh, limit these lot of um, act negative activities within the environment. Okay, so we are going to take a break. And uh, we'll be right back. And then we are going to wrap up. I mean, uh, the conversation is going well, but uh, we have to wrap up. So we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Log on to IonCentralPraiseLive.com or YouTube, Facebook at Central Praise SKB for making a difference to prayer, conversation, and the spoken word with your host, Pastor Clyde Williams. You can join us by making the call 1-869-664-6491 and make a difference. Welcome back to Making a Difference. I'm your host, Pastor Clyde Williams. And today we have Brother Raymond. He is a, a man of God. We go to the same assembly. And... Um, We've looked at uh, provision and partner. We've looked at priesthood. But in this last section, we are going to look at how the lack of a man in the home, um, how that has contributed to behavior patterns inside the home and outside the home. Um, the behavior patterns can be positive. It depends on what took place before. Or the behavior patterns can be negative. It depends on what did not take place. And, and that's what we are going to explore. Okay, so thank you very much for being a part. Uh, Brother Raymond, I listened, a gentleman, uh, he was on Roland Martin. That was some years ago. But I remembered he said that he, he did not have a father figure. And he left the home and he went out and he joined other negative groups. And he said they taught him a lot of things because he was looking for this uh, role, this man, this male figure. But he says he said he cut himself because they were drawing him away too much. He said he he cut himself and he he came back and he started going back to church. But he he wanted to mention that to 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 let us know the impact of a man not being there. Talk to us about this role of a man because when they're there they're positive things when they're not there they're negative things in every community around the world there are misdemeanors there are teenagers young people you know who who have deviated from the law and are causing a uh, eyebrow to be raised uh talk to us about about the man in relation to his impact on the younger minds now, um, there are two different kind of fathers. There are some fathers who are saved. There are some fathers who are not saved. Now, the father who are not saved, obviously, is like he's going to be like a loose cannon. Mm -hmm. What happened, happened. You know, some fathers, mind you, there are some fathers who are not saved mm -hmm. who bring up good children. Right, right. That is right? true. That is true. I'm not going to deny from that fact. Right. There are some fathers who are saved 
who do opposite. Because you know, their fathers were saved and they allowed the, 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 the wife to take control. Now, I don't care how good of a mother you are. You cannot teach a boy to be a man. Okay. You cannot teach your son to be a man. So that is why it's so important to have godly fathers present in the house. Hmm. Now, if you have your, your, your boys in the house and as a father who believes in doing right, you'll bring up good boys. At least you'll speak to them. They, mind you, there's some boys who want to do their own thing when they get bigger. Yeah. You, you, you teach them every good thing there is. Yeah. And somehow down the line, they still end up doing, still end up doing wrong. Yeah. They, choice. they choose something. They choose yeah. something else. Yeah. Yeah. Your mind is clear. Yeah. You, 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 you is clean because yeah. you know yeah. that you have taught them. But at the same the time, if, if they're going to do something and you find them and pull them up, they're going to listen. They're going to you? listen. They are going to listen. They're going to listen. I know they're going to listen. Because they know what you have yes. taught them. They're yes. going to listen. Yes. And if they live long enough, yes. they will come back. Yeah. Yeah. That is why there are some stray boys yeah. who go out, yeah. get in trouble, and get a second chance, and yeah. they come back. And they come back. And they change their life yeah. around. Right. Because they remember the teachings from the father. Yeah. Right? Mm. But how can you be a good father, mm. a good role mother to your, to your boys, if you're always absent from the house? Right. And when you come home, you're sleeping. You have nothing to contribute to your children in relation to bringing them up. Hmm. Nothing to contribute. Now, if you are... And that is why I believe the Bible say you must not um, join together as equally you. I believe that because of this. For instance, if you have a godly mother and a godly father, Right? Whatever the father teaches children, the mother will teach the children. Teach the, children. Yeah. the mother will allow the father to be the leader yeah. of the house. Now, if she unsave, she's going to feel like she, her method of training should, or leading should, should be, be right. out front. Right, right. Because she unsave. She don't know anything about Bible mm. principles. So that's a problem there. But, and that is why I believe as, 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 as a safe mother, and a safe father, it's always better bringing up children. Because, for instance, if I am not saved, my wife is saved, I want to go to Juve, I want to take my son. Problems. But if I am saved and my wife is saved, son ain't going to Juve. Son going to be home with parents and getting the teaching. So they always a good thing when both parents are saved. No, we, we, we live in a society, we live in a world where that don't always happen. So it always will have these boys who will be troublemakers, who will, you know, go out. Some fathers have the tendency to let boys do as they like because they feel like someday you're going to get in trouble. And Hold on, it. stick a pin. Do you think this has to do with uh, biology? Do you think this has to do with genes, behavior? Or it has to do with social behavior? You think it's something in the bloodline some, or it is social behavior? They, they, I believe... Learned behavior? Some of them come down from um, from generation. Right. Some they might have a grandfather you don't know about who was whatever wicked. he was. Wicked. Yeah. And then that is why it's important to have fathers who are praying fathers to yeah. break those generational curses. Because curse I'm, over bringing the blessing. I'm bringing exactly. the blessing. Exactly. Yeah. That is why it's important to have mothers and fathers who could um, nullify and dismantle negative things that have been spoken over your children. Right. So and break those. If you know, if I know that I had a, a, a father who was wicked. Right. When I pray for my children, I break in that. Right. But if, if, if you don't know how to do these things. Right. It could come down to the child. Which, which comes to the priesthood because part of priesthood is to pray and break these cycles and also seek God and pray into the positive trend. Exactly. Right. So then priesthood again becomes important as the male figure. Because sometimes, you know, you have two boys in the house. Yeah. One is so nice and, 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 and well 
respectful and so on to appear on. Yeah, and the and then one. the other one is like a thug. So yeah. you, you want to know so where this come to, from? Right. Same mother, same father. So where right. this one come from? Right. Generational cause. So you have to so you have to pray in terms of, of genealogy. And yeah, then you, you yeah. have to be able to break and nullify this. This whatever, yes. whatever had been climb whatever climate program over the bloodline. You, you know must what? be able to to break it. You know I don't tell my children, I said, let me tell you something. Anybody are you here say anything negative over yourself? Yeah. Just say I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I say you don't have to say it loud. Right. Just say look, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Right. You have to nullify. You have to know these things. Yes. Yes. So because so that's where the teachings come in. Exactly. Right. Cause somebody right. hear a mother gonna tell a father or tell a son, you're just gonna be like a father, man. You know the father is a old tug, yeah. a drug pusher, whatever. Yeah. And, and you tell your son, are you declaring that you're gonna be like your father? Yeah. 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 And then and then when he comes out like the father, now you as the mother, so heart, broken, you're broken. Your heart just broken up because you can't imagine your you're children exactly. going on this road. I tell people, you know. And I will go back to the Apostle, Envil. They have three children. And you know, one thing I used to always hear the Apostle say, every night he used to anoint the children. Anoint them that they will not get themselves in trouble get, and yeah, deviate from them. the principles. Sometimes you wonder how you could have three children, all of them in church, all of them involved yeah. in church and so yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. And then some parents can't. Right. You know, it, 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 it's because the knowledge of the word is it prayer and over the preaching head? and prayer praying for your children head. and yes, so yes, yes, it yes. make that a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And fathers that have to get up off of these um bar stools and on the road and so on and, and be home to help raise your, your boys, especially yeah. the boys. Otherwise, otherwise, um, they're going to be apart from being raised by themselves in the house, exploring things on the television and on exactly. the phones, and then you have no idea what spirit leave these things gone upon the people and then they began to react a certain pastor way. williams i work with some young men at rams up up at the warehouse mm -hmm. 18 17 19 and so on and i hear some conversation and i just ask them why are you just 17 18 what stress are you could be stressed and pastor williams when you sit down with these boys and mm -hmm. you speak to them yeah you'll understand eh why they like that I tell them one time, I say, look, I want to invite all of your church. I say, man, tell them how you come yeah. and get saved. Right. I want to invite all of So they could hear something differently. Yes, I tell they, them, look they, here. They need to see something The bus will pick up here wherever I live. Yeah, I say, wherever they live. The bus have the responsibility to take you to Saddlers and yeah. bring you back. Yes. And the them will, sort of things, yeah. right? Yeah, the bus drivers will do that. You know what the boy tell me? He vexed with his father because his father could have make... His, he said he could have a di different life if it wasn't for his... If his father had taken him with him in in um Anguilla. He said my father owned out a big truck and doing well in Anguilla and I hear working for Rams from up. Mentorship. You see? You see, you see it, it comes back to the role of the father. That the, listen, listen, within the family, a lot of things happen with I told a gentleman, a young boy the other day, because he brought his father um to school for something. And he was saying something I said, that's your father he say, I said, look at him. I said, he is how many years ahead of you? Mm -hmm. And the father, listen, when you see a man comes to school meeting, mm -hmm. a man, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. what I told him. Yes. I said, listen, look around. You yes. realize all these are mothers? Yes. I said, and your father come with you. That is one thing I also I tried to I turned to him and I said, I said, yes. boy, this is good. In front yes. of his father. Yes. And I, I said, father, this is good. Yes. I said, you are teaching him something. Yes. Because you are coming along with yes. him. And I sat him in town the other day walking. And he was, his father had him going with him. Yes. What I'm saying, I said, look at him. Because when you reach his age, that's how we are going to look. Sure. And you have to pattern that which he's saying. The man is teaching you something. Yes. He's coming to the school. He's finding out about you. Yes. He's asking questions about yes. you. I said, don't take it for granted. Sure. You know what? You know what? I find out with those boys I saw. Mm -hmm. I work with the Rams. They're not bad fellows. No. But because they do not have they that didn't have mentorship. That guide. That, that mentor guide. Right. That is why they, they choose right. this right. kind of way. Right. But I, I, I tell you, you know, sometimes I wish I was in a position yeah. where I could actually, where I could um do better for them in a right. way. Like, you know, mm -hmm. just bring them out to that. One one guy there, when I speak to him, he told me I have nine subjects. 
and he working at Rams. Yeah. Opportunities. Nine subjects. Opportunities. Had he had the opportunity, things would have been different. This next, exactly. This next one again tell me he want to... I oh, I overheard a conversation with him on the next guy about trimming. Yeah. And when they finish, I yeah. call him and I say, look, that is what you want to do. He say yes. I say, let me tell you something. If you go to the bank and get a loan, yeah, to buy you 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 yeah. barber shop yeah. stuff, you will get it. You hear? And I try to encourage myself. That your skill. I see, this is important. Yeah, they do not have. They listen, do not have that. Listen, this yeah. is important. This They're is good. Important. Let me tell you something. And they 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 respectful. Mm -hmm. Let me tell. You, Pastor Clive, these guys who we feel like they are bad and right. thug and mm -hmm. if you sit down and speak to them, you know, yeah. you'll find some stuff that they're not. They're not bad. The enough. kind of person yeah. please push them in these directions, exactly. and then one thing spiral after exactly. the other, and then this is what exactly. Happened. Listen, I intelligent could, guys. Listen, I could carry on this conversation with. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we, but but we have to wrap up. Uh, I hope we can continue this because uh, yeah. the the point at which you you finish there, we need to take up that to see how we can as men help these young men, mm -hmm. you know, to to make to to have their gifts. You know, find value. Yes. You know, and make room for them, and keep them away from all these yeah. negative cycles of events. Yes. Listen, our communities and societies will be better. Of okay? course. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, well, we want to thank God for being here today and for having Brother Raymond. I'll seek to get him back. He's not easily to get in the studio. You realize he's busy. He's, he's going here and there. But, but I'm going to ask him to pray and. Um, and then we we are going to wrap up. So, Brother Raymond, give a short prayer for us. Our time is running out. And um, cover the men and the young men especially and our communities. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity that we can discuss in relation to fathers being there for children. Father, I bring the young men before you this morning or this afternoon, whatever time it is, God. And I pray that there will be a change, mighty God, in their behavior pattern, in their thinking. Father, I pray, mighty God, that you will instill in them, or you will have around them men who can teach them a positive way of life. The fathers, mighty God, who can be dear for them, not just to be a father, but to be a guide, almighty God, and to be a good role model, to teach them in the right direction. In the name of Jesus. I pray, mighty God, that fathers who are who are listening now in the communities, mighty God, wherever they're at at this time, mighty God, there'll be a difference, mighty God, in our men in the name of Jesus. Because we recognize, God, that the enemy is after these men. Mighty God, that is the way, oh God, that the enemy seems to break down or destroy a home once the men, mighty God, is out of place. It's easy, mighty God, for the adversary, for the enemy to go in and destroy that family because of the lack of men in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, for strong men, oh, mighty God, in every household, in the name of Jesus this morning. Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you, and I, mighty God, I praise you this morning. I give you glory, mighty God, for what have been done. I give you the praise for what has been done this morning, mighty God. Someone, mighty God, wherever they, they're listening, mighty God, they will be challenged to be a difference and to be there for the children as prophet, priest, and king in the house. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Brother Raymond. Thank you very much for jo joining us. Uh, I give a shout out to, to Pastor Carmen and all the members and the prophetess of Faith Tabernacle Church of God, to my wife, Pastor Julie, to Brother Adams, Brother Weeks, everybody who tune in at, at this time. Thank you for joining us. This is making a difference. Brother Raymond, give a shout out to Sister Dawn. <laughs> I, I want to give a shout out to my wife, Sister Dawn. Thank you. Um, I told her where I'm going today. Yes. I don't know if she's going to tune in or if she has the opportunity, but I'm shouting out to everyone else. Yes. Pastor Kami, the prophetess, all the ministers of Faith Tabernacle Ministries and all the men yes. of Faith Tabernacle. Big shout out from yeah. Big shout Raymond out. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for being a part of us and we'll meet you next time. Goodbye. God bless. Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Log on to royalcentralpraiselive.com or YouTube, Facebook at Central Praise SKB for making a difference to prayer, conversation, and spoken word. 
with your host, Pastor Clyde Williams. You can join us by making the call 1869 664 6491 and make a difference. Your life is up 